Hello everyone, this is Alex of Vending Machine Support. Are you having cooling issues with your drink vending machine? Well, let me show you a quick way that you can check the cooling system in your drink vending machine without ever having to take the machine or the compressor off location. Now, if you find this video useful, I appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And with that being said, let's get started. Now, I know it can be very frustrating when you get to your drink vending machine, you open the door, and everything's warm inside, or all your drinks are frozen. You certainly got a problem with the refrigeration system in your drink machine. Now, there are a few key areas that you can check, be it the compressor, the fans, or the thermostat, where the problem is, why it's not cooling or freezing up. Now, after my 32 years of repairing vending machines, I've got to come up with a checklist that I go through to quickly determine where the problem is. So I wanted to share that with you. But first, a little disclaimer. I am not a licensed refrigeration mechanic in any shape or form. This is just my experiences that I've learned over 32 years to determine where these issues are, and it does seem to work quite well. If you have a problem with your refrigeration system and it's gonna need work, I seriously please look for a licensed refrigeration mechanic to do those work. Now, there are three things we're gonna to need to be able to do this test. Number one is going to be a screwdriver. This one here is a Phillips head. You may need a flat head to be able to remove the delivery chute out of the machine. The other one is gonna be a dollar bill or a piece of paper. Usually if you have a vending machine, dollar bills should always be really available. The last thing we're gonna need is gonna be an extension cord or a drop cord. So let me show you the steps that I like to do to go about this. And the first one is, we're gonna to check to determine if the fans are working inside the machine. So I'm gonna put this over here, put this back here. Now, we have fans, there's two types of fans in a, in a drink vending machine. One is called the condenser fan. Now that fan is located at the bottom of the machine and only runs when the compressor turns on. The other fan, for the most part, is called the evaporator fan. This sits behind the evaporator coil, which is the coil that actually gets cold. That evaporator fan runs 247. Never turns off unless the machine's been unplugged. Now there are some machines with some ecosystems in there that basically shuts those fans down whenever the door is open. Now, we're gonna, do is we're gonna check the fans and that's what the dollar bill is for. Sometimes you may be in a location where it's in a factory or it's in a warehouse and it's very loud. You can't hear if the compressor's running or not. It's always good to have a visual reference. So that's why I always use a dollar bill. What I'll do with this is I'm going to plug the compressor in, let the machine run, and I drop the dollar bill up against it. It should get sucked up against the coil if that fan is working. Now, if your evaporator fan is not running, your evaporator coil will freeze over and then not circulate the cold air, making the drinks warm. So there's one problem that could possibly be. So it very well, not the refrigeration system, but a fan that needs to be replaced. Now, what we'll also make sure is your compressor. Is your compressor coming on? Sometimes it's hard to hear that. Again, we can, with this, we can check at least to make sure that our condenser fan is coming on because if the condenser fan doesn't come on on the machine, but the compressor does, the compressor will overheat and thermally lock itself down. Again, not cooling the machine. So this is another quick visual reference tool. That, so let me show you how I go about doing that. Now we're looking at a Dixie Narco 501E drink vending machine. And what you're looking here is the axle condenser coil for the compressor unit. Now there's a fan behind this. It's on, one of its functions is to help cool the compressor. So it's pulling air through this coil and then blowing it out the back of the machine. It's another tip. You always want to make sure you have at least two inch gap between the back of the machine and the wall. But here we got air being pulled through, being blown out the back. Now if you're in a facility that you cannot hear, you don't know if that fan's running or not. So what I've always liked to use is a visual reference tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dollar bill, if I let it go, you can see it. It gets sucked up against that fan. Now I know I've got airflow. So here we know that condenser fan is running. Now what we can do is over here is the thermostat to the compressor. So I can actually turn the thermostat off, which would then in turn turn the compressor off, and that dollar bill should fall off. So let me go ahead and do that now. So I just turned the compressor off. 
and there you saw the dollar bill drop. So that means the fan is stopped, the compressor stopped. So here we know our, our thermostat is actually turning the compressor off when we turn it to the off position and then the compressor shuts down. Now what you're hearing in the background is the evaporator fan running. And I'll show you how to check that. But let's check to make sure that our first, that our thermostat will kick on the compressor again. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. All right, now the compressor's turned on. Now we'll get back there this way. And then here I can check the, and there we have it. We know our compressor does turn on and off via the thermostat. So more than likely, this thermostat's okay in this machine. The next thing we do is we're gonna go ahead and check the evaporator coil and the evaporator fan. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Now to get to the evaporator coil, we need to actually remove the delivery chute here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. That's where we're gonna have two Phillips head screws here on a Dixonarco 501E. On your machine, if it's a Vendo or if it's a Royal, it may be a different set screw, but you can always remove these delivery chutes. Usually it's gonna be by nut or two screws to do that. So let me go ahead and remove this right now. I'm just going to loosen these. Lift up, pull out this entire assembly from the machine. Now this gives us a clear shot of the actual evaporator coil right here. So this is a coil that gets cold inside of the drink vending machine. Now there's a fan behind this on this Dictionarca 501E that runs 247. As long as the machine's plugged in, that evaporator fan will run. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there are some machines that that evaporator fan is on a relay, will only run if the door is closed. So you'll need to figure out a way to get that fan to turn on by the door. Usually that's done by a door switch. So again, here we can check to see if we have airflow. So we're gonna take our dollar bill, place it up against that, and you can see it gets sucked right up against it. So we know we've got airflow being pulled through here. All right, take that away, goes back in. Now if I unplug the machine from the wall, you'll see that that dollar bill, if it's not wet and sticky, should eventually fall off. And there we go, there we go. So now I know that that fan is definitely working and using a dollar bill or a piece of paper as a visual reference tool for airflow. So now that we've got that delivery chute assembly removed and we can actually see the evaporator coil, this is where we can get into our field test of the actual compressor. So let me get that set up and I'll show you how we do that. Now how I do the field test is I unplug the machine from the wall. So there is no power to the machine. You can hear it, the machine is completely turned off. And on the Dixon Arco 501E, I like to unplug the compressor. Now most drink machines, the compressors will be able to be unplugged and that's where we unplug the compressor from the machine. Now if it's a Vendo, that may be behind a panel. If it's a Royal, it's gonna be back on the side. But you'll unplug your compressor from the machine and then this is where the extension cord comes in handy. We're gonna take the extension cord. At this point, we're gonna plug the compressor into the extension cord. But first, the steps that we need involved is we have the machine unplugged. We're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and we're gonna let the compressor run by itself with the machine unplugged and the door open for 15 minutes. And we should start to get frost on the evaporator coil. So within 15 minutes, we should start to get frost on this evaporator coil right here. All right, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna plug the compressor directly in and then we should get frost on that coil within 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get that compressor plugged in. All right, get this spreader pressure. Now I'm gonna set up a timer and we're gonna let this guy run. So what we wanna see is we wanna see frost all the way across this coil here within 15 minutes. Top, bottom, left to right, we should have frost all across that coil. If we don't, then we know we got a problem with that compressor. So let me go ahead and get that set up and get started.
right, so after running this for about 15 minutes, uh, this is what we got. Now we've got frost all the way up the top, all from left to right we've got it, but we don't have it from top to bottom. And we notice at the bottom down here, there is, uh, it's, it's not frosted up. Now we've got it on the coil lines as they come through here. Those are frosted up. But down here in the bottom portion, I'm a bit concerned about this. And this is not what I would like to see after 15 minutes. Again, now the compressor is still running and we want to run this without the machine unplugged. We just, just got the compressor running. Again, running for 15 minutes. I would like to see frost on this entire coil here. So I'm a bit concerned about this. And one of the telltale signs we couldn't see because there's discolorization down here. You know, kind of see where this stops. You can see the discolorization here. So at this point, I would then bring this probably over to my refrigeration mechanic or have a refrigeration mechanic take a look at this actual compressor. Perhaps it's low in charge or something like that, but it does not, uh, it's not what I like to see. Now, you might be able to put this in operation and it may be cooling fine, but it may struggle when you get into warmer weather and be fine in colder weather, but when you get into a warmer weather, it starts to be struggle to keep the, the drinks at their optimum temperature between 36 and 40 degrees. So this is not what I want to see after 15 minutes. So as you can see, this drink vending machine, I believe, has a problem with the refrigeration system, the actual compressor system. It possibly could be low on charge or it could have a blockage. Now, most compressors and drink vending machines are actually sealed units. They don't have charge ports in them. So this may actually have a leak somewhere, um, I feel. So at this point here, this compressor will come out of this machine and I'll hand it over to my refrigeration mechanic. But what I've done is I've done most of the legwork when it comes to diagnostics. Here I've determined that it wasn't either the condenser fan or the evaporator fan, it wasn't the thermostat, but actually was the compressor unit itself. When plugging it into the power cord directly, having the machine turn off, letting the compressor run for 15 minutes with the door open, I wanted to see ice form on that evaporator Oil coil top, bottom, left, or right. In this scenario, I did not. So hopefully that kind of helps and gives you an idea of quick ways that you can check your cooling system in your drink vending machine without having to remove the entire compressor or the entire machine off-site. It kind of narrows down with the diagnostics and then from there you can take the appropriate steps to get it repaired or parts replaced. Now, if you found this video useful, I really do appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments or ideas of videos you would like to see, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to help as much as I possibly can. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.